Baba Fagbara Who else has power? Baba Fagbara Baba Fagbara Baba Fagbara Kibobo Araye Le Modaju Ikwe Jesu Nikolaba Lori Aye Bobo Baba God said that I am the Almighty, that I alone rule and reign in the affairs of men. And we're calling that God. If you understand the God that we're calling into the situations and circumstances of our life, you will sing that song. You will cry it. You will ask him to intervene because he's the only one who can. I don't know if you have power. Me, I don't have. But he has. Baba Fagbara Reho. Baba Fagbara Reho. Baba Fagbara Reho. Baba Fagbara Reho. Kig Bobo Araye. Le Modaju Ipe. Jesu ni koloba, lori aye kogbo baba. Father in heaven, we thank you because you are God. There is none like you. You sit on the circle of the earth. Men are mere grasshoppers beneath you. The entire earth and the heavens is the dust that's under your feet. The entire earth is but a footstool for you. You are the almighty God. You are the awesome God. You are Jehovah. Lord, you are Lord God almighty and we thank you because we can call upon your name and Lord you will intervene in our circumstances and our situations. Father, Lord God, you will cause light, Lord God, to to disparage all the darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are God alone. Father, Lord God, who speaks a word and nothing, no one can stand against it. Father, we thank you because you called us again into your presence. Father, into that place where there is a fullness of joy. We ask that, Lord God, you will open the eyes of our understanding again tonight. And, Lord God, you will teach us from your word. Father, and you will grant us life. You will grant us light. You will grant us strength. You will grant us power in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory and honor and praise because, Lord, it has pleased you, Lord, to draw us out of the darkness and then to place us in the marvelous light of your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we thank you and we bless you. We exalt you. We give you glory and honor and praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk about listening. And the reason is because God is speaking. I'm going to say that again. We're going to talk about listening because God is speaking. You know, we've come to pray. But many times, prayer is about talking to God. It's about bringing our requests to God. It's about talking about all the things that we want, the things that we desire. And true, his word does say we should ask for the things that we desire. But prayer is much more than that. And I'm going to be talking about the second half of prayer. You know, prayer oftentimes is communication. It's, it's two ways. But many times, we don't listen. A vital part of prayer is, first of all, listening to God. And then there's a part where we must listen and wait for him to give us instructions, to give us directions. And I'm thankful the Spirit is one. Many of the prayers that we have prayed already point to the fact that you can't do anything until you have heard God speak. And as children of God, Jesus says that if you are my sheep, you will hear my voice and you will follow it's not enough to just hear. He says, my sheep, not only do they know my voice, but they follow. 
And so to lay a foundation, I'm going to read three scriptures that will inform the three things that I want us to see clearly. So if you, if you will join me, please, John chapter 10. We'll read verse 1 to 5, then 16 and verse 27. I'll read. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens. And the sheep, they do what? It says they hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name. Isaiah 43, 1, 2, 3 says, God knows your name. And he calls you by name. And when you hear his voice, you will know that it is his voice. He says he knows his own sheep. He goes before them. And the sheep, they follow him. For they know his voice. Yet, they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 30, Isaiah 30 verse 21 says, and I would like you to read it because it speaks to you. It says what God wants to say to you this morning. It says, your own ears, not mine, your own, your very ears will hear him. Him is the Lord God Almighty. Right behind you, a voice will say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. That's what the NLT says. John 16, verse 12 to 14 says, I still have other things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine, and he will declare it to you. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to me. God is speaking to us every single day. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening for God's voice? I was in New York one day. I went for a course. And in the course of the course, I heard God say, you need to be IT literate. I used to be an accountant then. And I didn't fully understand. But as soon as I got out of that class, I went to register for a course called MC, MCP Plus, I Microsoft Certified Professional. And I did it, and I passed it. A few months after, I stood, I sat actually in front of an MD of a company. I had gone through the interview process. And he said that we'll make you group head. But the only reason why is because you have so many IT certifications that we don't even understand why an accountant has that. But let me tell you why God said go and do IT. He said the internet will provide a door, an open door for administration and for ministrations of the gospel. That there are people who you will reach, but only because there's an internet. But they doubled my salary because I heard him and I listened and I obeyed. God is speaking constantly, telling us, his children, what his will is, what his purposes are, what his plans for us are. And he does it daily. He does it constantly. The question is, are you listening? Am I listening? God gives us directions. Why I love John and why I love the Spirit. The Bible says God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. So when he tells you something, he knows already what's going to happen. So why don't we spend time? And we all pray. We're like that man who 
picks up the phone call and he dials God. And he speaks to God and he says, I need food, I need shelter, I need this, I need that. And then when he's finished, he says, Amen. And then he hangs up the phone. And God was just about to tell him that his blessing and his breakthrough is next door. And God speaks to us in so many ways. I know that the word jumps at me every time I read it. Sometimes one word, sometimes one phrase, sometimes one story. But it speaks to me, speaks to my heart and gives me instructions and directions. Sometimes it's, it's your pastor. It will be Pastor John. Sometimes it will be the Bible study. But God is constantly speaking. Sometimes God uses pain to put us on the right direction. Sometimes he uses nature. God has been known to use a donkey. I suspect that that donkey could speak yoga. God will use everything and anything to speak to us. And you see, he's using everything and everything to speak to us every day. Sometimes we're just not listening. So we're going to spend some time looking at his word and we're going to pray. I found out from reading a little bit of the Bible that the people who succeed in life are those who listen to God. If you look through the entire scriptures, you won't find anyone who was successful who did not listen and obey. It's easy to start with Abraham. So I'm going to start with Abraham. But you know what Abraham did? Abraham was willing to hand over his entire life to God. And he listened, he believed, and he obeyed. Listening gives God complete control. Listening also gives him the open door to turn the things that look impossible and makes them possible. There are things, there are situations in your life that look like a dead end, that look like it's finished. There's nothing I can do. David was in one of those situations in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm sure you've read this story before, but I'm just going to highlight a couple of things from it. I want you to look carefully at what he did and at how he listened and how the word of the Lord completely changed his situation and his circumstance. And then we're going to pray. We all know the story. David came back to Ziglag only to find out that everything was gone. Wife, children, livestock, everything. They, they stripped them clean. And his men were so angry that they wept and wept and wept. And they picked up stones and they were just about to let fly. But the scripture says David strengthened himself in the Lord. And I believe he went into his word because God's word, it's in God's word that you will find comfort and you will find strength and you will find hope. And he strengthened himself. In the word of the Lord God Almighty. But look at what he did in verse 7. Then David said to Abitha the priest, Ahimelech's son, Please bring the effort here to me. And Abitha brought the effort to David. So David inquired of the Lord. He was praying, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? When God speaks, we need to listen. What did he say? Maybe what is he saying to you today? He said to him, and he answered, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. God's word says it cannot fail. God, in Luke 1, 37, says, my words, (laughs) he says what? They cannot, cannot fail. So if God has spoken to his situation and his circumstance, there is no way on the face of this planet that his words can fail. And God is speaking to you too.
Are you listening? For every situation in your life, for every situation in my life, if like David, I go to the Lord God Almighty and I say to him, this is what has happened, what do I do? Do you think God will speak? He will. But we pray, and we pray from our, our understanding, our limited understanding. The Apostle Paul says we know all things in part. And we can only know all things in part. There is one who knows everything, and it is the Lord God Almighty. So to him we should come. So we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to help us to find strength in listening for his voice. So we're going to stand. And we're going to pray. Jesus, who is our example, prayed just like David prayed. And I want you to cry out to God, just like David did. He cried. He cried to the Lord God Almighty. He says, help me. Help me to find strength. I want us to pray. Lord, help me to find strength to listen for your voice. Help me to find strength to listen for your voice. Help me to find strength to listen for your voice. So that I will hear you when you speak possibilities into my impossibilities. Help me, Lord God Almighty, to spend time in your presence. Not talking, but listening. Not talking, but listening for your voice. Listening for the word. The word that cannot return to you void. The word that will accomplish the purpose for which he has sent it. And the word God, the word God speaks is the word that God will bring to pass. So I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray like David did. You know, David was at his wit's end. If not for the word, if not for the word of the Lord, that was the end. But he heard God. So I want you to pray, Lord, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I want to hear it with my own ears. Lord, let me be a listener. 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 Who hears your word? Who hears your truth? Who hears the word that will change my situations and my circumstance? Lord God, every impossibility in my life. There's a word for it. There's a word of God for it. There's a word of God for every impossibility in your life. God is saying, come and listen. I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you cry to God. Lord, help me to find strength in listening for your voice. Lord, help me to find strength in listening for your voice. Help me to find strength in listening for your voice. He will speak to your impossibilities. He will speak to the things that look impossible, completely, totally devastated. He will speak to it. You just need to wait. In Jesus' name. I'm going to take a second point. Those who succeed with God, like I said, are those who have learned to listen and to obey. Abraham and Mary listened and obeyed. We oftentimes read Genesis chapter 12 and we read the blessings that God spoke to Abraham. But we don't read <laughs> the previous verse. And if you read the last two verses of Genesis 11, you'll find something very interesting. I found something very interesting. God says to Abraham, he was Abram then. He says, leave your family, go into the land where I will show you. But he spoke to him and he listened and then he obeyed. God is speaking to us deliberately, daily. And he's giving us directions for where we should go. So the question I ask myself is, am I listening? Am I listening? Because if I listen, God says, I will bless you. I will bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God has already spoken the word. You and I need to be in that place where we hear it. And obey it. And follow.
for Lois. Mary said, Lord, just as you have said, so let it be done to me. Abraham listened, he believed, and he obeyed. And he received a blessing. Do you know, do you know when Abraham died? Do you have any idea? Do you know how many centuries ago it is? But because God spoke a word into his life and he obeyed, because he, he heard and he listened. Generation, everybody in his generation, you, 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 you don't even know what their names are. God is going to speak into your life. And that's what he said. He's going to speak into your life. And you're going to listen. With your own ears, you are going to hear. And he's going to bless you. Bless your children. Bless your children's children. He's going to bless you with an eternal blessing. That's what he says. For those who patiently wait and listen for his voice, your blessings won't be temporal. They'll be permanent. Mary's blessing was permanent. You know, Mary was a teenager. In those days, they got married as teenagers. But she heard, she listened, and she believed. Her blessing was eternal. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, help me to spend time listening for your voice. It's, you need to pray. It. You need to pray for yourself. You need to understand that when you pray, when you pray, don't talk. Listen. Don't talk. Listen. Don't talk. Listen. Don't talk. Listen. Isaiah says, as the rain and the snow comes down and waters the earth and causes it to bud and bring forth fruit, he says, so is my word. It cannot return to me void. It will prosper in that to which I have sent it. When God speaks to you, there is no way it can return to him void. It must accomplish the purposes for which he has sent it. So you should be praying, Lord, speak to me. Speak to me because your words are, yea, they are amen. They are settled forever. I want you to add to that prayer, let my own ears hear your voice. My own ears, not somebody else's ears, my own. If you like, please touch your ears. Isaiah 30 says, your own ears, not somebody else's ears, your own. Your own. You want to hear the voice of the Lord who is God. Your own ears, not somebody else's ears, your own. Ask that God will speak to you loud and clear. When I saw this, I asked God, I want eternal blessings. Speak to me blessings, not temporal blessings. Yes, I want a car, but Lord God, I want that which is eternal. That which will for, forever and ever and ever. Because you will speak it. You spoke it to Abraham. You can, you will speak it to me. Lord God, speak your word. Lord, let it be an eternal blessing. And let it be one that brings glory to your name. In Jesus' name. There's a connect to when God speaks his word into your ear. And you both obey, you believe, and you obey. My last, my last character is Joshua. The Bible says, and I'm, it, it's great if you read Joshua chapter 1, 1 through to 8. But I'm sure I've run out of time. So I'm going to jump to verse 7. It says, only be strong, be very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to do. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then 
you will have good success. Joshua so heard God that he had the audacity to tell the son to stand still. You can only you can only dare that when you have heard God with your own ears. And God is waiting for us. He says, where the soles of your feet tread, the time in which you and I live, where, where we tread, he says, be courageous. Because when I speak a word, he's going to speak a word that's bigger than you. He's going to speak a word that's massive. He's going to speak a word that looks impossible. But because he speaks it, it cannot return to him. But it will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. So when you're listening and you hear something that is bigger than you, don't be afraid. He says, take courage. And he's going to ask you to speak to situations and circumstances. And the mountains will bow. As Acts 1.8 says, he will give you the spirit and he will give you power to be what? My witnesses. To speak his word. It will have value in eternity. It will have glory in the Lord God Almighty. So we're going to pray. Just going to pray. Lord, not only do I want to listen and hear your voice, but when I hear your voice, fill me with power, fill me with courage, and fill me with boldness to speak your word. Fill me with boldness to speak a word that is your will. Fill me, fill me with boldness. Father, fill me with courage. Father, fill me with power. And I will declare your word. I will speak it, Lord God, as you have purposed and planned that I will speak it. Father, cause that, Lord, when I speak it, it will be your will. Lord, your will will be done, Lord, in and through my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God, your will, Lord God, will be done and I will live a life that is pleasing unto you in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to pray, Lord God, help me to speak your word. Lord, Help me to speak that word that I listen to and I hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Lord, I 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 thank you. In Jesus' name. Some of us don't listen when you pray. You pray. You pray for one hour pray for 30 minutes but you don't listen god says listen he says not only should you listen take your notepad and your pen and when you pray after you have finished praying sit down and listen sometimes you will hear something immediately sometimes you won't but sit down and listen there, there are prayer meetings that are held they are called waiting meetings Waiting prayer meetings. They don't say anything. They wait for God to speak. Because they know that when God speaks, <laughs> there's nothing that can stop it. So I want you to create a habit. The next time you bow your heads to pray, don't say anything. Ask God to speak to you. Have your Bible close by. God may say, open to a particular passage. God may say nothing. And you flip your Bible open and you will find that the word will jump at you and he will tell you what to do, how to do it, where to go, what to do. And the more of God's word you know, the more you can tell whether it's his voice or the many other voices that you can hear. But I want to make you a challenge. Throughout this week, this next week that you're going to take, spend some time listening. And you will hear him because God is constantly speaking and constantly desires that you know the things that are yet to come. Let's bow our heads. There's someone who's listening. You're not sure of the voices that you hear. But you can tell that Jesus is calling you. I want you to pray after me. Father in heaven, I thank you. I thank you because I hear your voice. I know that it is your voice. And so I confess my sins. I come before you and I ask that you will forgive me. I ask that, Lord, you will cleanse me from my sin. I ask that, Lord God, you will make me whole. I receive you into my life as my Lord and my Savior. I ask that, Lord God, you will make me new. 
And I ask that, Lord God, from now on, I will begin to hear your voice. Lord God, I thank you because I will follow in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, Lord God. Blessed be your name. And if you're the one, I want you to find a four-square church as close to you as you can. And I want you to begin to attend that church. And God will bless you. And he will write your name in the book of life. And he will make you new, brand new. And you'll be a follower who listens and obeys. And in Jesus' name, 